Our National Space Council will re-energize the pioneering spirit of America in space, and it will ensure that America never again loses our lead in space exploration, innovation, and technology. That was Vice President Mike Pence introducing NASA's newest class of astronauts yesterday. They could take part in missions abroad, aboard commercially built spacecraft from private companies like SpaceX. NASA's counting on SpaceX to bring cargo and eventually astronauts to the International Space Station. SpaceX relies on NASA contracts and its launch pad. Manuel Bajorcas at Kennedy Space Center in Florida shows how this cooperation could turn into competition. Complete with a Hollywood soundtrack, NASA for years has promoted plans to send humans into deep space. But its space launch system won't be ready to bring humans around the moon until at least 2021. So it came as a surprise to NASA when SpaceX founder Elon Musk held a conference call. So this is, uh, yeah, should be, I think, super inspirational. Announcing plans to use a powerful rocket that hasn't yet flown to sling private tourists around the moon next year. An ambitious timeline, according to Mary Lynn Dittmar, who represents some of SpaceX's competitors through the Coalition for Deep Space Exploration. If you're putting all the schedule pressure on, you're automatically creating an environment where you are operating at higher risk because you have to meet the deadline. Do you um, see that happening currently? I'm concerned about the 2018 guy deadline for, for SpaceX. The company is already busy launching commercial satellites while working on a NASA contract to launch astronauts to the International Space Station. And liftoff. NASA has relied on Russia for rides to space ever since its shuttle program ended in 2011. Not anything against the Russians, but it would be good to have Americans that are able to move back and forth now from Earth to space using our own vehicles. The bigger prize is Mars. Both NASA and SpaceX are working separately on plans to get to the red planet. Do you see any scenario where NASA and these companies might be stepping on each other's toes at all? Well, yes, people are, have to relearn the dance steps, right? Charles Miller is president of NextGen Space. He advised President Trump's NASA transition team to embrace competition between traditional aerospace contractors and companies like SpaceX. It seems to have worked. President Trump's proposed budget for NASA in 2018 increases cooperation with industry. It's my um, belief that the human spaceflight endeavor of NASA will collapse unless we get more innovation from American free enterprise. We've been evolving to that new way of business for a while. Acting Our Administrator team. Robert Lightfoot appeared to agree. We want big companies, we want small companies, we want everybody to come to help us do this. Because this journey is hard. Yet some basic differences still have to be resolved. A NASA safety group raised concerns about SpaceX's plans to fuel its rockets with humans on board after this explosion while fueling an unmanned rocket last year. Mary Lynn Dittmar worries any disaster involving SpaceX could have larger implications for the future of space exploration. Might people extrapolate from that? Oh, well, this is so dangerous, nobody should be doing it. Is there that danger? I think there is that danger. I would hope not, you know, I would hope that people wouldn't go down that road, but, but I do worry about it. SpaceX would not comment for this story, but Elon Musk has defended the fueling process and said the company is doing everything it can to minimize the risks. Later this year, SpaceX is planning to test a larger version of its Falcon rocket, the one that will eventually carry tourists going around the moon. For CBS This Morning, I'm Manuel Bajorquez at Kennedy Space Center.